or 12. We've been doing this for 12 weeks in a row, pretty much. Uh, you can find me here on YouTube under The Crafty Gemini. I'm also on Facebook under Crafty Gemini. And I post weekly, not anymore so weekly, but we go live weekly or twice a week, uh, tutorials. And I do also online video courses and online clubs for all kinds of things related to sewing, quilting, bag making, gardening, all the things. So if you like what you see and if this is your first time tuning in, Go ahead and click the subscribe button on YouTube and then hit the like button on Facebook too so that you can uh, be kept in the loop every time we go live or we post new videos and courses and things like that. So we're going to give everybody a couple minutes just to tune in. I see there's a bunch of you on YouTube, almost 100 people on already before we got on saying hi to each other and where they're tuning in from. I'm coming to you from my home studio here in North Central Florida. I see we have friends, hi Garnet, tuning in from Mexico. We have uh, Deva tuning in from South Texas, Kathy from California. Hey, Boricua Sewing and Crafts tuning in from Hay Market, Virginia. The audio sounds good to me, so I think we're all good to go there. Sometimes we have a few glitches on Facebook, so remember that we are live, if you're catching us live, we're live on both platforms, both on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page and the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel at the same time. So if either platform is acting a little bit weird for you, try to refresh, and if not, then try to head over to the other platform and see if it's streaming a little bit easier there for you. Usually that works. All right. Hi, Pat, tuning in from Gainesville. Neighbor, how are you? Okay, awesome. Shanika's tuning in from Brooklyn. Hey, girl. Emmy from Miami, my hometown. My gosh, Kalisha's tuning in from Winter Garden, another Florida neighbor. All right, so if you are subscribed to my email newsletter list, you probably got an email about an hour and a half ago or so, letting you know Whip Wednesday's on today at one, which is what we're doing right now. We're going to be talking about zipper pouches. I have a lot of little zip pouches to make for the kids in my family, and I tend to lean towards zip pouches or something in that realm, right? S small, easy stuff that I can use my scraps of fabric on, and then also things that they can use, practical projects, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about the most basic pattern that I use for zip pouches. I have a couple different things here. And actually, before I jump right into the demo and, and talk about that, we'll kind of go down a whole path with this. I wanted just to give you all a quick update. We did get more crisscross apron patterns in stock. They are listed on in our online shop. You can always shop with us at craftygemini.com slash shop. So the crisscross aprons, and I thought I had a sample here and I couldn't find it before we went live. But uh, y'all have probably seen the pictures of me and a couple weeks back, several weeks back. We talked about this and we did a demo and a flash sale and all that. So we sold out again this weekend and we just restocked. So I just wanted to let y'all know if you missed out on getting one of these aprons and you want to make it for the holidays for yourself or for a gift, then definitely check it out because they're back in stock. Okay. So that is that. I'm going to set that aside. Then the headbands. Remember a few weeks back on another episode of Whip Wednesday, we were talking about making these simple headbands. This one is mine. And then I made one for my daughter that turned out to be just a little bit too short and that we cut at 16 inches in length. Uh, I have a tutorial for this and I gave measurements now in the most, most recent version of the tutorial for kids ages five to eight then kids ages like 8 to 12 range, and then 12 and up, like the adult size. So some of you during that Whip Wednesday had asked if I could teach you how to make the headband on a serger. So I did that video, and it posted to my YouTube channel yesterday. So if you have a serger in a box, in a closet, and you're afraid to use it, try it out on this project. That would be perfect for you. If you're someone who invested in a serger and you kind of feel bad because you don't really use it, and you want to use it some more, give this project a try. You will need stretchy fabrics. I've had some questions from people on social media asking, you know, can I use quilting cottons for this? Not for the way that it works. It's designed to be used with stretchy fabrics. There are other ways, right, that you can make headbands with um, woven fabrics or non-stretch fabrics, but you'll have to incorporate elastic or some other stretchy fabric somewhere in it. So for this pattern, the way it was designed, dimensions and all, uh, make sure you grab some stretchy fabric. This is the one that I made in the tutorial for my daughter and I use double brush polyester spandex. Uh, we also, so I will say some people ask where they can get fabrics that work for this type of project. 
In our online shop, we sell fabric as well, okay? We sell woven fabrics. I think the cottons are not listed anymore because we are pretty much sold out of the quilting cottons, but we do have some cotton spandex left. We have some double brushed poly spandex. And so I recommend you head over to the shop at craftygemini.com shop. There's a menu for fabric. When you click there, then you can have a look and see what the fabrics are, what we have currently for sale online, okay? So you can definitely find some stretchy fabrics that'll work for this, all right? So that's the update on the headband. I updated you on the apron. Now, let's talk zippered pouches, okay? And I'm gonna pop in here real quick, make sure that um, if I see any questions that I can answer, I go ahead and do that, okay? And we are including links for you in the chat if you're watching us live or even if you're watching the recording, you can scroll through. The links are included for you in the description box below the YouTube video. If you're on Facebook watching us, uh, you can look through the chat and we include the links there on all the different things that I'm talking about so you can more easily be able to find it, okay? Mary Grace says, I got my apron kit and finished it on Sunday. It fits perfect and love the fabrics that you picked. That is so awesome. I'm so happy to hear that, Mary Grace. Thank you for sharing that. That's so cool. Uh, we, we had a flash sale Friday bundle with the aprons where we put in two one-yard cuts of fabric, and of course we sell out of those. If you're interested in getting in on bundles and, and flash sales and things like that, make sure that you head over to our uh, website, craftygemini.com, and click so that you can add yourself to the email sign up. If you are on my free email newsletter, that is the best way to find out about everything that's going on so that you don't miss it, you don't tune in too late, and then things are sold out because things sell out super quick when we do our flash sales, okay? Model is asking, will the surging stitches unravel? So they can unravel, but if you watch the tutorial for the serger version of the headband, and I already threw it down there, uh, you'll see at the end I show you how to weave in, uh, or, or I should say, I mentioned how to weave in the serger tail ends so that you don't run that risk of them unraveling on you, but then I also share with you how I do it on a sewing machine. It's like a lot quicker, and I am obviously always have sewing machines set up. Uh, you might want to weave them through with like a darning needle of some kind, and they sell some little serger tools that you can do that with also. If you're someone who maybe has to like take out one machine at a time and maybe your sewing machine is set away, as you're working on a project on the serger, but if you have your sewing machine out, I find that it's super quick to just take it out. You basically drape the tail ends of the serger over the seam allowance itself and just hit it with a few back and forth zigzag stitches and that works fine. That's what I tend to do, okay? Um, but yeah, if you don't secure them somehow, they can unravel, especially over time and if you're making a project that you plan to wash and dry, all right? Hi, Wendy, tuning in. She says, aloha from Hawaii, awesome. Okay, uh, Susan is asking, how much is shipping to England? So it's going to depend on what you're ordering based on weight. When you go to our website, and this is for all the international customers outside of the US, when you per, you know select products in our shop and you add it to your cart, it will give you an estimated shipping. Keep in mind that that's just estimated based on the size and the weight. Sometimes when you add multiple items, you'll get like a kind of a wild shipping amount we always refund everything over a dollar extra of the actual cost. So if you know, you're know you charged $32 for shipping something to England and we see that when we package it up and our team gets ready to print out your label, if it only costs $22, we will refund you the difference. So just also keep that in mind, okay? All right, so let's see. Rhonda is asking, did you decide if you're going to sell the pattern for the pouch from Friday? Thank you for the perfect segue, Rhonda. So this is what she's talking about for those of you that might be lost and didn't tune in on Friday. We are live right here on the Crafty Gemini Facebook and uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel Wednesdays at 1 now and also Fridays at 7 p.m. and I'm on the East Coast, so Eastern time, okay? Last Friday we did a flash sale for my lacrosse pencil pouch. It included a one-page PDF document that you can print out with the template. It included five sheets, different colors of faux leather, and it included five metal zippers and a spool of thread and a sticker and a thank you card. So we sold out super quickly of those bundles. So Miss Rhonda's asking, did I decide if I'm going to sell the, the video course for the lacrosse pencil pouch by itself? So yes, Miss Rhonda, we decided to sell the course by itself because so many people were asking. And if you all have tuned in to Flash Sale Friday since last year, we don't usually do that. We don't sell the class separate from the bundle. But 
We got a ton of emails from everybody who was very disappointed because they missed out on the bundle. So you can sign up for the lacrosse pencil pouch right now in our online shop on its own. Okay, we are also today, if you're watching Whip Wednesday, for the rest of the month, we're offering a coupon code where you can save an additional $7 off the course price. All right, so if you want to check out the lacrosse pencil pouch, we're going to put links here uh, in the chat box for you. If you go to craftygemini.com slash shop, it's one of the first couple items you see. It, it's called the lacrosse pencil pouch. And I'll show you briefly. You can make this. Uh, first, I will say it has raw edges on the inside. Okay, so if you're looking for something fancier that's lined, this is not it. This is kind of like a quickie way to still make a nice, good-looking project, especially with the holidays coming up. If we can um, swap out to this camera angle, maybe I can show them a little bit better of a close-up. So I made them here out of the faux leather. Look at that black metal zipper. And the metal zipper really just makes it pop. But if you're making these for kids, for people to just keep their markers and pens and stuff like that in, you can definitely use just a, a regular number three craft nylon uh, zipper. Okay, the one with the plastic teeth. So you can see here how I did a yellow zipper. I did some pink, a uh, hot pink top stitching, again with the metal. A zipper and you can see the edges are raw on the inside but we still get a really nice clean finish nothing is going to fray or unravel on you so faux leather vinyl craft text and even cork I whipped up a sample in some cork fabric and y'all know I like to buy my cork from my friend Sarah Lawson at so sweetness.com she has cork in a ton of different colors this is um, the natural color with some gold specks super cute and I used a purple zipper on it and then the zipper itself has gold uh, zipper teeth. So it looks super, super cute. But if you want to sign up for this course, you can use the coupon code FLASH7, and that will save you another $7 off the video course. And like all my other video courses, once you sign up for the class, you get unlimited access for it. It never expires, and you can, you, you know, it'll always be linked to your video account, okay? Now, to, to kind of give y'all an update on this, we have ordered more faux uh, leather in. So as soon as we get it back in stock, we will see about doing another flash sale, I think would be good, uh, featuring it somehow. But we will, you know, we already have it on order on its way to us. So as soon as we get more of that, we'll be able to, but, I mean, I can whip these up now in about seven minutes or so. Super quick and easy. And it includes a one-page downloadable PDF that gives you the pattern template shape for the pouch itself, okay? And then if you're using stuff that you have at home, say you're signing up for the course by itself, I use a nine-inch zipper is what I recommend, okay? And then for the fabric itself, all you need is one piece that measures at least eight and a half by 11. So like the size of one sheet of paper, roughly, and that will be enough, okay? So that's the update on that, Miss Rhonda. So again, remember, you can use that coupon code FLASH7 for $7 off, and it expires at the end of this month. All right, and that's for the lacrosse pencil pouch. Now, let's get into today's zipper project. This is a, a take on a free video tutorial that I already have on my YouTube channel. It was one of the uh, 12 days of last minute DIY gifts that I did a couple years back, and we featured quilting cotton fabric, that was interfaced with my favorite fashion fuse. We'll talk about this in a minute. But I thought I'm going to be making, like I said, I love to make zippered pouches for gifts. I'm going to be making a lot of these little pouches in different textiles, right, for all the little kids in my family. And so I thought that I would whip one up out of one of the faux leather sheets. For those of you that got in on the flash sale, you got five sheets in your bundle. So if you have extras, this might be a great little project to whip up. This is the bigger version. I just used the whole sheet so there was no fabric waste. And the tutorial that's gonna show you or walk you through the same techniques that I'm gonna do today is called, um, it's my keychain coin purse or coin purse keychain. As long as you type in those words to YouTube, you'll find it. Crafty Gemini, type in Crafty Gemini and then keychain coin purse or coin purse keychain. And I have a free tutorial that way you can watch it, you know, whenever you want. You can rewind it, slow it down. But today, we are going to make one just slightly bigger. And this is my tried and true favorite, quickest way to make a zippered pouch. And actually, when I taught a lot of in-person classes to kids especially, this is how I teach them to install a zipper because it's so easy. All right? So I'm going to get started prepping my fabric. And I just got a bunch of uh, zippers here. Let's go ahead and switch to the other camera angle so I can get all my stuff ready. So I just got a bunch of number three 
they're just craft zippers, plastic ones. They all have the plastic teeth. And you can see that they always come in varying lengths, okay? For this project, if you have a longer zipper than what the project you'll be making is, it comes in really handy because you'll have more room on either end for top stitching and for working with it. But once you get pretty good, you know, you can get away with a zipper that's just about the same size. Thank you, Miss Monique. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna set these aside. I haven't decided which color zipper I'm gonna use yet, but I'm just showing you this one here. With that sheet of faux leather, and I use like an aqua top stitching thread with a hot pink zipper, look how cute. Little pouch, and again, this is for a raw edge finish, but if you top stitch it neatly, it looks super good, okay? And because something like a faux leather or a cork fabric or a vinyl, they have more body to them than the quilting cotton, it's already gonna feel more substantial, simply based on the fabric that we used, all right? So let's get started on this. I am going to use quilting cottons because I know all of y'all got quilting cottons in your stash. So I have my iron, should be kicked on and warmed up here. I am a starcher, ladies and gentlemen, so let me grab my bottle of starch. This is what I happen to have on hand and it looks like it's dried up here. Okay, just a little. I'm gonna press my fabric first to get rid of all the wrinkles. You don't have to starch, but if you do wanna pre-shrink it, that is kind of a cheater way to pre-shrink because we're adding moisture from the starch and then the heat of a dry iron. You can also just uh, hit it with like a, a spray bottle of water. Y'all have seen me do that plenty of times before, I'm sure. I'm just gonna give this a good press and then we're gonna get into the interfacing. Because of quilting cotton, it's funny, when you talk to quilters and we talk about weights of fabric, lightweight and medium weight, a lot of us consider quilting cotton a lightweight fabric. But if you were to make garments with this cotton, this is not considered lightweight. This would be more in the medium weight, okay? Because it doesn't drape as much as a true lightweight cotton, like a cotton batiste or something. It's crisper, okay? And it wrinkles a lot because it is a hundred percent cotton, okay? Lightweight from here would be like a rayon chalet, which I love to use for light drapey garments, okay? But this is more medium weight. But still, it's not quite as medium weight as a faux leather or a cork, right? This is kind of heavier weight in this scale. So what I need to do to this is to stabilize it with something else. I don't really wanna go super stiff with the stabilizer options because then it can get a little bit bulky and because I started off making zipper pouches like this as I was teaching children, I always like to keep it a little bit simpler, okay? So I'm going to cut this fabric down to size, and by size I mean hmm, whatever you want. I think I recall from all the classes I taught that I used to have the kids cut these to like nine inches by 13 and a half was like the standard. And actually, I have a couple samples here that I made in classes so I can show you. Here are a couple other little zip pouches done the same way with quilting cotton interface with 100% cotton interface or woven cotton interfacing, okay? And these are simple. These would be cute for people to keep their masks in because they're lightweight. Remember, they're not like a big pouch that's gonna stand on its own. It's just a little fabric zippered pouch. Go Gators. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this to nine inches by 13. I can't really reach all the way over there to grab my ruler. So I'm gonna use my 10 inch slicer, which I oftentimes use for measuring fabrics anyways, as long as the measurement is under 10 inches. Let's see what I wanna do with this. I think I'm gonna cut it this way. Let me clean up one side first, just to trim it up. So I like to fold it and then I line up a straight line on my ruler on the fold. That way I know if this is straight, then this edge of my ruler is gonna be straight. So that, and then let's go ahead and measure nine this way. And if you have a 10 inch slicer and you've never used it as a proper ruler, that's what all those measurements are there for. I put them there on purpose because I don't like to design rulers that only have one use, right? All right, so we went nine inches this way and now we're gonna go 13 and a half the other. Let me clean off this edge. 13, half of 13 is six and a half, six and three quarters. Okay, so half is gonna be here. And then I'm just gonna bump up 
I'll use this edge so that I can extend my ruler higher up and I can span the whole way. And this is something that is so customizable. I mean, you can make a teensy little pouch just for lip gloss, like I did in that one free tutorial that I'm talking about where I use the same techniques that I'm featuring here. We make it super tiny. It's just like a little coin purse with a little keychain ring, but it's the same, same techniques, okay? Once I have the fabric cut to size, yeah, my math was right, okay? Then I use this as the template for cutting out the woven interfacing. Now, let's talk about the 100% cotton woven fusible interfacing. This is a Bozal product that we love, been using for years and years, and we carried in the shop. This is called Fashion Fuse. This is similar to a, like a Pellon, what is it called, SF101. But as you can see, the package that we sell, and we have it on sale right now in the shop, the package we sell is a massive piece. Do you see how big this is? A lot of interfacings, when they sell it to you packaged, they're really narrow, like 20 inches or 22 inches. If you make handbags or you like to assembly line style your stuff, you can see that by having a bigger piece, I could cut out a bunch of these and just place them boom, 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 right all the way across, fill this up and fuse all my pieces all at once. So for bag makers, I highly recommend this uh, fashion fuse if you uh, do a lot of handbags because this is often the interfacing you'll find we use for linings okay our piece our packages are custom cut 36 inches by 60 inches so you get a full yard this way by another huge massive 60 inch piece so keep that in mind it's not just like any old packaged interfacing this stuff is worth it okay great quality it's 100 percent cotton and again it's a custom cut piece you can't always find uh, this size. So actually, let me just open it up. I'm just cutting one. So we're just going to cut this piece here. And I just bump it up close, close to the selvage, close to the edge here, so I don't have to cut on that side. And the way that I placed it is the wrong side of my fabric on, make sure that it's it, the scratchier side of the interfacing. The other side just feels like a lightweight cotton muslin. It's smooth, just like the cotton fabric. And then on this side, there's tiny dots of adhesive. So I want the wrong side of my fabric here going on the scratchy side of my interfacing. And then I'm just gonna use it as a template and carefully cut around. That way I don't have to, you know, use my rulers and measure on the interfacing also. There's no need. If I take my time to measure accurately on the fabric itself, that can be my template. You can see this is still not even the full piece. I've been making multiple projects from this and I still have a huge chunk. So remember that we carry that stuff in the online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop. So now let me grab my little ironing mat board thing here that I made. I always double check that that's the adhesive side going here because if you fuse it this way, you're gonna be really upset. This whole thing will stick to your ironing board. So make sure adhesive to the back of your fabric. And then sometimes I missed it with some steam, but usually I can just get away with the heat of the iron on this. It fuses really easily. So I'm just pressing down in the center and then I work my way out. Because if I start sometimes here and you start working your way here, you might find that you end up putting like a bubble into the fused fabric and you don't wanna do that. So kind of like quilt basting from the center out, smooth that fabric out. All right, let me keep pressing that, moving it in place. Let's see, usually on the corners, we forget to hit it really good. All right, yeah, Willow's saying that the 10 inch slicers are in stock. We did finally get our huge order, y'all. If you've been waiting on a 10 inch slicer, this is the time because they are back in stock. All right. Okay, Gladys is asking for the code again for the lacrosse pouch. Thank you, Miss Rhonda, for typing it in for her. It's flash and the number seven all together. So I always let it kind of cool down a little bit before I start handling it because if the adhesive is still warm and you start messing with it, you can end up um, basically peeling it off of the fabric. And I want it all to cool down so that glue, right, the little tiny dots of adhesive stick really well. And now you can see it still has a good flow to the fabric, but it is a little bit more stable now. All right. 
Okay, Lisa's asking, do I have any tips for getting creases out from the Bosal Fusible? So it depends on what you're talking about, which Bosal product that's fusible. If you're talking about the fusible foam, I shared a tip a few weeks back on a Whip Wednesday where I steam, not touching the fat, not touching the interfacing, but I put steam over top and just hover the steam over top of the fusible foam and those creases will come right out for you, okay? So if, if that's what you're talking about, the foam, that will help. Otherwise, if it's like this type of a product, as you fuse it, because you can hit it with the heat of the iron, it's cotton, then you just, you know, fuse out the wrinkles that way, okay? Okay, so here it is. So we have this, and we're going to get a zipper. And uh, a couple things I'll talk about is the direction of the fabric. Here, obviously, I don't care about this too much. It kind of has an all-over floral design, but if you were a real stickler, you would say, oh, well, I wanted my pouch to have the floral going this way. If you are working on a fabric like this, for example, where the logo and the little gator, we absolutely want it to read this way, okay? Uh, then you definitely want to make sure that you're cutting, If say you're making it the same size as me, that that nine inch measurement is going this way along your fabric and then the 13 and a half goes the other way. And you can see that you can patch the pieces together. So if you have a lot of scraps, just sew a bunch of strips together to make whatever the full length is that you want and then fold it up on itself, okay? For this one, I think the floral looks cute either way, so I'm not worried about that. But keep in mind, this is what I wanted to say about the directional prints, that if you set it up so that on the front it reads correctly, because the pouch is made from just one piece of fabric, it will be upside down on the back end of it, all right? Just so you know that that, because right, the zipper gets inserted, but it's like one loop of fabric. So it's where it's reading correctly on one side, on the back end it's upside down. So just make sure that you orient the part that you want to read right on the front. But I'm a huge fan. This is one of my old Dominicana fabric prints that I designed years ago for my uh, first fabric collection. And you can see when you work with non-directional prints, it looks super cute no matter which way you're looking at it. All right, so this one. We need a zipper. Ooh, this color goes perfect. What? Yes. Okay, let's do this one. Let me move my iron out the way. I think I can turn it off for now. It's getting toasty up in here. So... I have a way longer zipper than I need. If this measures nine inches, I would recommend at least an 11 or 12 inch zipper. You can make it work the other way, but you know, I'm used to teaching beginners and kids with this. So we always usually will pick out longer zippers. So pretty side facing up and I'm gonna flip my zipper. I like my zippers to open from left to right. So that's how I orient it. And then I'm gonna flip it upside down so that the zipper and uh, zipper teeth and pull are face down and I kind of center the panel on the zipper. I don't want it too far over or too far over this way. I want to give myself some room to work with here. And then you just match up the top edge on the top edge of the fabric. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can keep this steady here, especially if you're a beginner. You can use actual pins. You can use these handy dandy plastic clips. You can use wash away wonder tape. You can even use uh, Elmer's glue, like washable glue. Okay, so just something there to keep it steady. And then let me bring the sewing machine over. Y'all, I am working on my Juki LB5020, my little handy dandy beginner machine here that I've been using for all these demos and it is working great. I will keep y'all updated because I told you I was gonna do a video review of this because we do have some um, to sell in the online shop. I've uh, already filmed the unboxing, so I'm going to do an unboxing video that I'll post to my YouTube channel so y'all can check it out. This machine's great for travel. Uh, if you're in the process of moving and you want to, you know, have your sewing machine and your stuff is in storage or you're going somewhere, you're going to be on the road, whatever it is, it's great for more experienced uh, sewists who want a lightweight machine. It weighs about 12 pounds. It's nothing. I mean, it's great but also for beginners. And y'all have seen me use this to sew stretch knits, lightweight, medium weight knits, tissue knits, quilting cotton, stuff with interfacing. It's awesome. So I'm super excited to film the review on that. Now, I went ahead and installed the zipper foot on my machine. If you have a sewing machine and you've never sewn a zipper before, just make sure that you reference your user manual so that you can see which foot your machine labels as the zipper foot and just go ahead and install it. Then I'm going to, let me go ahead and zoom in a little. 
All right, so I'm just gonna stitch down that top side. And this is how you should be looking at it. Pretty side of the fabric facing you, but the zipper on this edge should be lined up and facing down. And I have my length here set to two point, let's do 2.4 stitch length and just a basic straight stitch. The key here is to not get too close to the zipper teeth because even if you don't sew over the zipper teeth themselves, if you get super close, you won't be able to open the zipper. There won't be enough room in there to fit the metal part of the zipper slider thing. And the straighter you sew here, the straighter your finished zipper is going to look. If you kind of weave in and out and in and out and your seam is not very consistent, your zip your zipper is going to buckle in the end. So if you've ever sewn a zippered pouch and you've seen it like you're wondering wondering why it buckled like that, that's why, because of an inconsistently sewn seam allowance. Okay. This machine does not have automatic thread cutter, y'all. It's like a 300 and something dollar machine, so just so you know. Okay. So the first edge of the zipper is sewn. Now I just lift the zipper up and at the same time I'm lifting it to make it face up, I'm pushing that seam allowance down towards the inner facing side. And this, because it's cotton and easy, you can just finger press. You could even hit it with the iron, but get into the habit of finger pressing because if you plan to do full leather or cork or anything like that, you won't really be able to hit it with a hot, hot iron. All right, so now that the seam allowance is going down towards the inner face side, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to top stitch it now. I don't want this to lift up and potentially get caught when I'm opening and closing the zipper, right? Have you had that happen before? Where like little threads of the fabric get caught in the zipper as you're trying to open it? Prevent that now at this point. So we push it down and then we're gonna top stitch. And my top stitching, I like it to be long. So like 3.5 on this for a cotton like this, 3.5, three to 3.5 I would say. So now I'm top stitching about an eighth to a quarter of an inch into the fabric here. And I'm just riding my zipper foot along the left side of the zipper teeth themselves. Okay, so boom, one side of the zipper done. All we gotta do is do it to the other side and stitch up the sides. So, so quick, I can crank these out in like five minutes. And if you use a non-fraying fabric, even quicker. All right, so there is the first side. Looks super pretty. We have a nice top stitch thread. And you see how pretty that looks? Can y'all see that? It's top stitch right above the top edge. That is never gonna lift up on me to potentially cause me any issues opening and closing the zipper. Beautiful. Next one. Now we place everything pretty side face up and I'm gonna grab this remaining fabric edge and bring it up to match up this remaining zipper edge. Make sure that you're lining up your fabrics along the side too, you don't want it to be off. We'll put a couple clips here. And remember I said you can put clips, pins, glue, wash away wonder tape, whatever it is. This is like the trickiest part, but if I can teach this to little, six and seven year old kids, y'all can definitely do it. All right, and then we're gonna stitch this again. I'm gonna change the stitch length again down to like a 2.4 because remember now, so keep this in mind, when you're sewing a seam that needs to hold things together and you don't want it to come apart, you wanna be in the shorter stitch length range. When you're top stitching to show something off that's gonna be exposed on the outside and oftentimes you're sewing through multiple layers, you wanna lengthen that stitch length, okay? to give the machine some chance to feed more of the project through because it's then bulkier at that point, but also so you get a nice stitch definition and you can see those pretty stitches because it's exposed on the outside. And the more you can practice, the better you will get. I'm at a super weird angle here, but you can see I can still sew pretty straight with minimal clips. You just start to get a feel for it over time. So don't give up if your first zipper was a little wonky. Keep at it. And I have a ton of zipper pouch tutorials for you to watch on my YouTube channel for sure. All right, so we stitched that one down. So now you know that the next step is to top stitch, but how are we gonna top stitch if this is now a loop like this? Well, we're gonna open the zipper all the way, and then I'm going to worry just about the side that I need to top stitch. So I'm gonna push that seam allowance down 
give it a good crease with my fingernails again. And this is why having a longer zipper helps because I have more room here to like slip this through without it having this kind of edge right here. If I have the zipper pull right here, this all would be together. It would be like super kinked up and really hard to get in here. So like I said, when you first start off, just start off with a slightly longer zipper than what you actually need. All right, so now we're top stitching. So let's bump the zipper or the stitch length up. What did I have it at? 3.5? Why not? And I'm making sure that I'm holding, I, I can feel it underneath. That seam allowance needs to be going that way towards the interfacing side. Okay, notice I haven't done any back stitching because I still need to stitch up the sides so those loose seams on the ends um, will get sewn up again by another seam. So no worries there. All right. So that one's done. Now we are going to zip this zipper up two thirds or so of the way, kind of like this. And I want to be looking at the wrong side of the fabric. So here is where you see how it's one big loop. Let me zoom out some. So it's just one big loop. So this is where you can customize. Do I want the zipper all the way at the top or in the middle? I don't like to place the zippers right in the middle. I get a lot of kids that want to do that, but then I have to explain to them, if you have a zipper right in the middle, this is your pocket and all this is waste because this is above the zipper, right? So instead, I like to put the zipper right at the top, like top quarter, top third of the pouch. So you give yourself more room to put stuff in. Do you see how that works? Whatever bit is above the zipper is going to be just waste basically it's not part of the actual pocket down here it's still part of the overall pocket because you have that included in the full height of the pouch but you know you can decide where you want it so I usually just eyeball it and I'll do like an inch of fabric at the top here whatever you do on one side make sure that you measure that it's the same on the other because you don't want to have a wonky zipper okay or a wonky pouch that the zipper doesn't just flow smoothly from left to right or right to left so I'm going to put a couple clips on the sides and we're just going to stitch down these sides at about a quarter of an inch back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And then I also like to back stitch right over top of the area where the zipper teeth are. Remember, I'm working with plastic zippers so I can do this easily and just back stitch over and over again. Okay. This is the most important thing to note in this step. Make sure that the zipper pull is in here. It needs to be somewhere inside the pouch. Because I have a longer zipper, if I open this and the zipper pull was out here, and then I stitched here, I'm not gonna have a working zipper pull inside the pouch. Same thing for this side. If the zipper pull was all the way pulled shut here, and I stitch here, I'm only gonna have zipper tape and no actual pull to use. So make sure before you stitch down the sides that the zipper pull itself is inside this range of the pouch itself. All right, so let me grab this and we are ready to be done with this. Just gonna stitch it down the sides and I'm gonna leave my zipper foot on because I can and I can eyeball it. Uh, but you at this point might want to swap off to like the universal sewing foot on your thing, on your machine. Let me lengthen the stitch length a little bit. All right. So notice what I'm doing here. This can easily flop open. I'm keeping them together, not on top of each other, just meeting. And as I approach it, I'm going to go past it and then I'm going to do some back and forth stitching right here just to secure it. Okay, and then continue down to the bottom. Remember to back stitch. I couldn't remember if I backstitched at the beginning, but I did. I can see it. All right. Then we'll swap over to the other side. Same thing. And you can add a wristlet strip to this. You can add a loop so people can like hook it with a little clasp to the inside of their purse to keep, you know, whatever feminine products or makeup or whatever you want to keep separate, but still easily accessible. I mean, there's so many ways that you can customize this little pouch. And again, I'm at the zipper tape, so we're going to go back and forth several times. And then here, 
back stitch. Okay. So now let's clean it up and flip it out to see what we got. Okay. So this is what it looks like now. Okay. I'm going to trim away the excess zipper tape. Of course, before you do this, make sure that you have the zipper pull inside. Okay. Now I like to take a lighter, where did I put it? Here. And just give that edge of the nylon of the, you know, like plastic zipper tape stuff a little bit just to fuse it so that the little bits of it don't fray on you on both sides. This is obviously optional. You can also go in and hit it with a zigzag stitch just if you don't want these edges to fray. But that's good. And then we are going to trim off a little off the four corners. You don't want to cut into your stitching, but I'm just kind of grading out the seam allowance by a little. You can see that there. I get close to the stitching and go off the edge just to reduce some of the fabric bulk. Okay, once that's done, your zipper should be at least a little bit open, enough for you to put your fingers in here. Open it up, poke out all four corners, and flip it out. Now, some people will say, oh, I don't like the way that that interfacing looks on the inside. It's 100% cotton fabric. So, I mean, it's just white. So I think for a quick project, you're making this for kids or whatever, it's completely wash machine washable and dryable. You can just, you know, leave it like that without having to bother with a proper lining. And that's why I call it my quickest zipper pouch. Okay, look how cute that looks. Super cute. And there's the pouch. All right, so like I said, you can add a wristlet strap to it. I've had little girls in my classes add, uh, they sew onto like a big loop of a strap to make it a crossbody pouch and they wear it like that. There's a lot that you can do with it and it's still a super quick and easy beginner project, whether you're making it or maybe you're using this as a sample to teach a beginner how to sew and, and to make their own little zip pouch. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go to my face camera so that I can check in on any questions that are coming in. All right, oh great, some of you, oh, Anne says it's a great tip about the lighter, definitely. You can also put fray check if you have fray check in your stash. Uh, what happens if the sewn stay rips out? Sewn stay, I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh good, we have some beginners on here who are enjoying it. Great, great, great. Mary's asking, what stitch length did I use for the sides? So the sides, again, remember what I said, if you are constructing a seam, if it's a seam that you're holding things together that you don't want to rip apart, go shorter. So the, uh, the side seams in this case would also be considered a construction seam because it's holding everything in on the sides. So I would be somewhere in the two millimeter to 2.5 millimeter range, all right, for the side seams. The only time I lengthen is if I'm going over a lot of bulk or it's a decorative top stitching. So those are kind of like rules of thumb, right? They can, you can change, but that's kind of like the, the main rule that I like to follow. All right, so let's see. All right, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you all. All right, okay, so Carol was asking, uh, what size needle, like an 80-12? Yes, so for anything with quilting cotton, even with a light, even to a medium weight interfacing, I usually will use a universal size 80-12. When you're working on the thicker stuff, like the faux leather or even cork sometimes, it just depends, uh, especially on the areas where you're gonna be going over more bulk. The more layers you add, the bigger you wanna go in the needle. So a lot of times people will just start off with a 9014 needle, a universal 9014, uh, in their projects that feature like these medium weight, uh, thicker fabrics. The cork I find is even thinner than the faux leather. So I usually go with an 8012 on the cork fabric as well if it's by itself, if it doesn't have any interfacings or you're not making a bag that features foam. Once you start getting into that, then I definitely bump up to the 9014, okay? So try that out, hopefully that works. Hi Liz, she says, OMG, you're the best, thank you. Hi Saskia, tuning in late from Belgium. Welcome, welcome. All right, so good, Roxy says she can't wait to try this, give it a try. You know I'm all about teaching you all different skills and techniques to kind of up your sewing game, but at the same time, 
completing a project, right, while you're learning. But that way, at the end of it all, you know, once you make several of my projects from all the free tutorials I have on YouTube, you will then have the skills to start Frankensteining patterns, you know, like mixing stuff, customizing it, making things because you have those foundational skills. So I hope that you all will try this project out in small, big, make it bigger, do whatever you want with it. Teensy little coin purses for kids to put their little rocks and treasures in. Those are super cute. Uh, so give it a try for sure. Then I wanted to give y'all an update next on the next sewing class that's coming up. If you've been tuning into Whip Wednesdays and Flash Sale Fridays, you know that we polled our audience and out of the four patterns that we offered as options, the number one pattern that you all chose for me to uh, make my next course based on is uh, the jean pattern. It's a PJ set pattern and we have them in stock in the online shop. Remember, when I come out with the early bird sale price for the course, the pattern is not included, neither is the fabric. Like the course is separate. The pattern is a Jali pattern, it's Jali 4016, the Jean PJ set. And I'm so excited because I finished the sample I was making for my daughter. Let me show y'all how cute. Okay, so a little bit about the pattern because I'm gonna be releasing the course and the early bird sale price really soon. I'll definitely announce it on Whip Wednesdays and Flash Sale Friday, and then of course on the email newsletter list. It includes the top and the bottom, look how cute. My daughter picked this fabric that we had. I do have some left that we'll, we'll, we will be selling kits. Uh, it does feature a lot of yardage. For the adult size ones, uh, you're looking at like three and a half yards of uh, stretch or cotton spandex type of fabric, and then half a yard of ribbing. And for the kid sizes, the largest kid size 13, you're looking at about two and three quarter yards. So almost three yards as well, and then a quarter yard for the ribbing. So I was able to source this amazing rib knit, y'all. I'm gonna have it in stock when we sell the kits, okay, in different colors. So we have that on order. Super comfy, super awesome. The elastic will also be included in the kit. This course is gonna be amazing, okay? Not only because you're gonna basically get two garments in one course, you'll learn how to make the top with the neckband ribbing and everything and the pants, but also because I'm going to include bonus videos. Always do. I do a bonus on how to make it on the serger for those that have a serger. If you don't have a serger, you can still sign up for this course because all you need is a sewing machine that has zigzag stitch capabilities, okay? Then I'll do another bonus video on how to top stitch with a cover stitch, which is what I did for the top of the pants there. And then I hemmed the bottom with the cover stitch machine. It, I did it in black, but look how, ooh, it's so perfect. It's like ridiculously perfectly straight. It's amazing. It's a great feeling, right? Super satisfying when you have like perfectly straight stitches. So that's that. And then I'm also going to tack onto this course a hack on how to make it short sleeve and shorts. What? So for those of us that live in super hot climates like we do here in Florida, uh, you will be able to have year round PJs. So I'm super excited because this class, uh, I'm busy, busy all these days filming classes or filming lessons for the class. And I will keep you all posted as soon as we are ready to open it up for signups at the early bird sale price. The sizes in the pattern include little kid size two, like a toddler, to US women size 24. Now they say that it's for kids, so you can do it boy or girl all ages like two to 13. I'm gonna whip up a pair for my son uh, and see how the sizing works for there, but it's a pretty generic silhouette in terms of that. So I think it's gonna work great. So it says kids and women. So that's what the pattern says, all right? So yeah, super excited, this is the next one. If you think you might be signing up for this course when I release it, I would get the pattern now because usually after we release the classes, the patterns sell out and then people get mad because then they're back ordered and then they're waiting for it and they already signed up. So if you think you wanna do it, get the pattern out while it's in stock, okay? Let me check in for any last minute questions. I hope that you all will definitely check it out. Liz is asking, does the PJ pattern have pockets? It does not, but stay tuned uh, for some info on that coming later. Uh, Let's see, Amanda's asking, are you gonna do a tutorial for the men's shirt from last week? So last week I worked on Jali 2918, I believe. It's a uh, boys and men's shirt pattern. Uh, I don't know that I'll do a tutorial on it, but that might be something for us to work on for sure. Okay, Marilyn says she ordered her PJ pattern. Awesome, awesome. 
can you use fusible fleece for the zipper pouch that you're making? Ashley's asking. You absolutely can use fusible fleece, but the fleece, because it has that fuzzy and thicker texture, it's not gonna lie flat like the woven interfacing does on the inside. So if you're gonna use fusible fleece, I would say you'd need to make it with some type of a lining because the fuzz, I mean, it's gonna get caught on everything if it's just the fuzzy fleece side exposed. Or another thing that you can do is if you're using a double-sided fusible fleece is to fuse fabric to both sides and then just make it just as I showed you here. That's another option as well. All right. All right. Uh, Diane says, website for the sewing machine used, please. So this sewing machine is the Juki LB5020. We buy our machines from uh, so many things in Mount Dora, Florida, and I know that they have some in stock. Once I release the unboxing video and the video review, I too will have some in stock, uh, but you can check them out at so many M I N I things.com. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so some of you are excited about the, uh, hack for the shorts on the PJs. That's going to be awesome. All right. Claudia says she already has her pattern and Siaza's asking the Juki model number five LB five zero two zero. All right. So thank you all so much. Uh, Sarah's asking, how do I get notifications when a live video will happen? You need to subscribe to the YouTube channel and then click the bell icon to enable individual notifications. And that way when we go live, you'll see them. If you are subscribed to our email list, you also will get an email the day of the live. And that is also another reminder for you. So to sign up for our free email newsletter, head over to craftygemini.com and you'll see a tab for email sign up. Go ahead and follow through the steps so you can add your email and then confirm that you've been added. Okay, that's the best way to find out on everything that we have going on. Boricua Sewing and Crafts is asking, will you be doing more videos on embroidering? Girl, you read my mind because I've actually been thinking about that lately. I'm trying to get the sewing studio here since we moved into our new house this year uh, to get it set up so that my embroidery machines are open and accessible, kind of like how I have the sewing machine so that I can do that. So stay tuned for, for something along those lines. I definitely want to do uh, more embroidery. I always feel like I want to do more machine embroidery when we go, get close to the holidays. They're quick projects. You pick a cute design, you download it, boom stitch it on a shirt, right? All right. So thank you so much for everybody for tuning in. I hope to see you here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for another episode of Whip Wednesday. And then this Friday, tune in again because we will be live at 7 p.m. Eastern for either a flash sale or kind of like a live chat Friday, one of the two. Okay. So we'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye.